Hey, good morning. Well, sorry, good afternoon, everyone, in fact. Uh, welcome to this twin field update around the new banking module. So um, what can you expect from me? Well, Steph has, has very kindly given me five minutes to do an intro, so I'll, I'll see how that goes. Um, and then uh, we're going to move over to Colin, who's going to be do a, undertake a demonstration of our twin field banking module, the new twin field banking module. Uh, and then Mike is going to talk you through next steps, um, also around our community, which is uh, super important. We want to kind of talk you through why you should be registered and, and using that as well. So Mike's going to be here for that. And then obviously we'll have some more Q&As afterwards. So that's our agenda for today. So I'm just going to run you through uh, who you've got on the call today. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Phil Hobden. I'm the head of the uh, sales team here at Walters Clue Tax and Accounting UK, specifically focusing around the digital sales and digital products. So I'm responsible for OneClick, FinCit, Basecone, Twinfield, um, and our, our upcoming cloud products. Uh, more about them on on some of our other webinars. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by Colin Emmett from our professional services team. Uh, good afternoon, Colin. How are you today? Good afternoon, Phil. I'm great, thank you. Excellent. And we're joined by Mike Hibbert uh, from uh, my team, um, one of our digital specialists around the Twinfield product. Good afternoon, Mike. Afternoon, both. I uh, hope everyone's well and not snowed in at the moment. Uh, look, I was waiting for see where we got the on the my bingo card when we got our first uh, chat about the snow so look, here's before we go on to our first official poll of the day in the chat just so we can test test that it's working and everyone's using it in the chat can you put a yes or a no if you have had snow today so have you had snow today yes or no and this will give us a a chance to see in the chat um how snowy the uk is. we can use this as our our, our uk weather forecast so just mike at the moment no one else can use the chat at the moment. Ah, there you go. Kim, Sandra, Sean, Angela. Uh, oh, blimey, they're coming in thick and fast now. Okay. No, yes, but only sleety. Yes, yes, it's quite a lot of yeses, Mike, on the snow. Well, the, the forecast in, uh, in the UK is correct for once. <laughs> yeah, that, that rare occasion where our weather forecast is, is, is almost there. So look, I am gonna, I'm going to pass over to Colin in a second. Before we do that, I want to run our first of two polls today. So our first poll is looking around how do you process your banking through Twinfield? So I'm going to launch that now. Um, so if you could just respond to this in the, uh, in, the, in the poll that's popped up on your screen. How do you process your banking through Twinfield? Manually, bank statement, import, live bank feed. So if you could just pop that into the uh, into that for us, and that will give Colin a little bit of background into the people that we've got on the call today. So we're at about 79, 79%. few of you are still not sure. Uh, give it a couple more seconds just to see where we get to on this. Um, 84. Oh, can we get to 85%? We need one more person to get to 85%. There we go, 86%, I'll take that. That's a, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good. Uh, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna share the results. because I think actually there's, there's some interesting stuff within this. Colin, Mike, can you see the results of that one, okay? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Yes. Excellent, so the majority either bank statement import or live bank feed. So it's probably a good time now for me to pass over to Colin who's going to talk you through the new bank feed module here on Twinfield. Again, if you've got any questions, feel free to pop them in the Q&A uh, and I will look at them and address them either at the relevant point within the Q&A or we can ask them to call in at the end of his section. Um, if you want to message me directly in the chat, equally you can do that as well. So I'm going to stop sharing the poll uh, and Colin, I'm going to pass over to you to talk us through the new banking module. That's great. Thank you, Phil. I'm just going to share my screen. And can you confirm whether you can see uh, Twinfield? I can yeah, see Twinfield. See that call. Perfect. Thank you. Well, thank you for taking for answering the poll. That's really um, that's really good, actually. Good to see that the uh, those of you that are processing um, your bank statements through the software rather than manually, it was more or less a 50-50 a split between importing the CSV files and, and using the bank feed. So that, that's a really good insight. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through 
uh, the new screens that we've got for the banking module. Uh, I'm going to compare them to the classic screens as well, just to try and give you some, um, some understanding of, of where they sit within the software. A couple of things to, to note and point before we do start looking at these is that, first of all, you won't see these screens on your system until around about the 15th, which is next week, and that's when they're going to be enabled across the platforms uh, for all our UK customers. Uh, second thing to note is that we aren't removing the classic orange screens as well. So if you're uncomfortable with what you see today or you want to take some time in getting familiar with them, you're not going to lose the functionality you currently have. They will re that functionality will remain and you can continue to use those screens in conjunction with the new one. So you can practice and then go and have a look at what, what's happened to the data in the old screens. The screens that we're going to look at, they are new developments. So there are some features that aren't yet currently available through these new blue screens uh, through the, the new banking module. Um, and just to explain, those are, if you're using multi-currency within your Twinfield setup, um, you won't be able to process a bank account through the new screens that isn't in the same currency as your base currency. Additionally, if you have any transactions, maybe sales or purchase invoices posted um, to customer suppliers, again, that transaction isn't in the currency of your base currency, then those transactions won't be available for you to match against. You can still go back into the, the uh, Orange Classic screens to deal with those, those two scenarios. Another area that's, uh, that's not yet available is if you use the checks and the paying in slips feature within the software, and um, that's in the Orange uh, screens on the, on the cash and bank section, those two transaction types uh, we don't yet have the functionality for allow you to, to, uh, to post the uh, entry that appears on the bank statement. So when that clears the bank statement, those two transaction types can't be uh, coded up via the, the new, new screens. Again, you can go back into, uh, into the orange screens. And then the final point just to note is that in certain scenarios, when dealing with transactions that are from a customer or a supplier, you may not be able to actually create a, a bank rule or a learning of, around that transaction. Uh, you can still code up and post the transaction line. You just won't be able to teach Twinfield a rule to remember that going forward. So I'm going to go into the cash and banks area within, uh, within Twinfield. You may have noticed that I've already put things onto my uh, favourites, so you can just put them as a favourites tile. But I'm going, to, I'm going to continue to use the cash and banks module so you know where they are within the actual menu system. Now, once the feature has been enabled, you'll see that you'll get some additional modules and tiles at the top here. So we've got bank statements. Now, you may have already spotted that we've got a white bank statements tile in the software already. That was more just of a, as an inquiry screen. This now is where you would start to work with your bank statements. We've also got options for allocation rules. Come to those afterwards. So the bank statements tile here replaces the orange bank statements screen here. When I come into this screen, you'll see that it's listing all the bank statements that have either been imported via a CSV or have been fed into the software using a bank feed. And my current view is to see only those bank statements which are unprocessed, waiting for me to, to complete. I can remove the filter. Uh, so if I click on here, clear all filters, and you'll see that I've got one bank statement, which is slightly grayed out on my screen here. And if I look over on the right-hand side, it's telling me a status of processed. So I can go back to any bank statement in the system that has been posted as well. Very similar to the tick box on the classic screen, show posted. Just going to add my filter back on. So I'm just concentrating on any bank statement that is waiting to be processed. So we identify the bank statement we want to use. We can use the search option at the top to search on the account code and account name. So perhaps you wanted to filter the lines in this screen just to maybe one bank account if you're feeding in uh, different bank, bank statements. I can also click on the column headers to sort. Sorting by the date is, is, is quite useful. Uh, so that you, can, you can then work in, in chronological order of the dates. I'm going to focus on the 1st of February for the bank statement to work with. And I just click anywhere on the row to open up that bank statement. This now takes me into the assigned bank lines screen. Okay. Now, this screen is a replacement for the bank lines report that you would see on the classic screen and also a little wizard icon 
the way you go in to do the coding and teach, teach Twinfield the, the actual rules. This screen is, is uh, split into four buckets, depending on the status of the line of the, of the bank statement. I've got a sign. So these are lines of the bank statement which Twinfield doesn't recognize and doesn't know what to do with. So they're, they're still coded to suspense. And I need to go through and consider these and, and, and code them up. We have proposed. These are lines that Twinfield has recognized automatically, either via, via a rule or another method. And they have been then proposed with a bank coding that you can review and accept or, or reject. Investigate, this is a new feature within these screens, and this allows you to flag a line on your bank statement for further investigation. Perhaps it's a payment that's gone out, you don't recognize it, you need to do a little bit more digging. So you can pop it into the investigate bucket just to keep it out of the way so you, you know then to go back and review that. And the assigned bucket, this is the final stage. So I've coded up my bank statement line, um, and if relevant, I've allocated it to or matched it to a relevant customer or supplier transaction. So the way that I would see the flow working with this is that I would first of all uh, concentrate on the proposed bucket. I can come and I can check whether the, the coding that's been applied by the rules is, is what I would expect. I can see on the, on the right hand side of the screen, the proposed uh, coding. So this is a bank fee uh, that's gonna be charged to bank charges and uh, charged with rent going to rent. Now at this stage, if, I, if I've got a long list, I can accept them all just by ticking. And down at the bottom, I've got an option to accept selected. So that's a quick way of just being able to accept the rules uh, that have been applied. I may want to review them individually. And at this stage, I can accept the, uh, the line for the bank feed and perhaps the one for rent, whilst that is how it would normally be coded this particular month, I actually need to call that up slightly differently. So I would, uh, I would click on decline. The line that I accepted has now gone over into the accepted bucket. The one I declined is now sat back in the to assign section, waiting for me to now call that up as I require. Hasn't done anything to the bank rule that was in place. So next month, it will still apply that coding. If I wanted that bank rule to stop, I'd have to go and uh, delete that bank rule separately. So that's dealing with the proposed. We then need to start working through the to assign section. And I've got a couple of scenarios just to work through with you on here. As you can imagine, there's quite a few different ways that these, these lines could, could, be bank, uh, could be coded up. So I'm gonna concentrate on this line here. I've got 10 pound 35, uh, which is a payment out, which is for interest. So it's bank interest paid. So over on the right hand side of the transaction, I've got this blue button. Now, Twinfield will assume if it's a payment out of the bank account, it's going to be a supplier payment. If it's money coming into the bank account, it's going to be a customer receipt. However, if I click on the drop down just to the right of where it says suppliers, I can be specific and decide what it's going to be. So it could actually be a customer refund, if that's the scenario, or in this particular instance, uh, it's going to be a general ledger payment. Now, as soon as I select general ledger payment, it's taking me into the allocation screen. And over on the right hand side, I can now enter the, the nominal code or just search for the name of the nominal account. So bank interest paid. If there's VAT, which probably won't be in this particular example, but I can also assign VAT as required. And I click on continue. That has now saved that allocation against that particular line of the bank statement. And then down at the bottom right hand corner, I have an accept button. So that's now accepted that allocation for me. And it's automatically moved me onto the next line in the bank statement. So once you're actually in the flow of processing these, it's quicker to actually go through the lines. Um, if you think back to classic screens, you have to click on the record selector in the top left hand corner of the, uh, of the list. I'm just going to close my allocation window so we can go back and we can see now but that interest line that I've just posted is sat under the assigned bucket. And this is the line here. I made a mistake or I actually missed, uh, missed something off that, that coding. So I want to reject that and, uh, and redo it. So within the assign section, I can click on the unassign and that moves it back into the to assign bucket. 
and now I can go back in and I can redo the allocation. So again, it's still bank charges. But now, if I need to, I can assign that to a particular cost center, and if relevant, also a project. So from within this screen, the nominals, uh, you can also assign to cost centers and projects. So I'm gonna head in and continue to save that, all that allocation and click on the accept button to uh, accept it into the uh, assigned bucket. So my next example is dealing with uh, transactions or, or monies relating to a, a supplier account. So I have um, actually a customer account. So I've got a, a, a receipt here from John's payroll services. And what I want to do is if I go over to the customers on the right hand side, it's a customer receipt, so I just click on the customer button. Now, because this time to infill is looking at it from a customer perspective, the screen's slightly different. And now I can see all the invoices that are in Twinfield Sales Ledger um, relating to this uh, to all outstanding customer invoices, not just John's payroll, because I haven't told Twinfield yet that we're looking at John's payroll as a customer. Now, using the search box at the top right, I can now filter that list just to invoices that are for John's payroll services. It's searching on the name. I've also got a couple of options here for filter. And maybe I only want to see invoices going up to the end of March. So I can now see my list of invoices, which I'm, I'm focusing down on. Um, you can see on the actual invoices themselves, the rows, this particular invoice was raised using Twinfield invoicing module. So if I click on the invoice number, it will show me a preview of the invoice. If it was an invoice that had been processed via BaseCon and uh, posted via the BaseCon um, method, then the icon at the right-hand side of the invoice number would launch that preview of the BaseCon image. What I can also do from here is click on this uh, final column, and this will show me the actual transaction from Twinfield as well. So I can drill right back from that, that matching screen to the source transaction just to make sure that everything is okay. Um, and that's the transaction I need. So that's the transaction I want to match against, £35 received against a £35 invoice. If I click on the tick box, that will now match that particular receipt against that invoice. I have to, I have to click on continue, which will save that assignment. So you can see here now on the right-hand side, um, it's a sales invoice to uh, that particular customer account. Now, I need to create a, a rule around this so I can add some learning to uh, this particular transaction. And that's very similar to the way it's done in Classic. So over on the left-hand side, you'll see that we've got the description that came through on the bank statement. So next time Twinfield sees John's payroll services, and I'm just highlighting, it will then add that onto the rule. And you'll see down at the bottom, it's now added into the description. And as with Classic, you can set up multiple uh, criteria there. So perhaps it's John's payroll and maybe there was a reference number at the end of the description. So you could actually set it up so it was looking for John's payroll and the, the actual description reference at the end. You could also extend the rules by other criteria. So you could say where the value is a certain amount uh, or it's particular uh, transaction type. So this is a direct debit. It may be a faster payment transaction. But also under this option here where it's showing show rules, I can now say that this particular rule is, is uh, relevant only for this one bank account or actually for the whole company, any bank account that I want to work with in this, this particular uh, company in Twinfield. So once I've actually got my rule created, I can click on the accept and create rule uh, down on the bottom right hand corner. And that's it. That's the transaction created. The rule's been saved and we move, we've now moved on to the next transaction. So it's taking me onto this next line of the bank statement. It's another receipt and it's from a customer called Cocos. Now my example here, uh, and it's something that I'm asked about quite often actually when, when working with customers, um, we've received the money for this, um, this, this invoice, but the customer has paid it by Amex. 
And what's happened during that transaction is that Amex has deleted their fee from the amount that they've, they've credited into our bank account. So the actual invoice is in, in the sales ledger is more than what we received in the bank account. So how can we deal with that using this, uh, these methods? So again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, it's a customer receipt. I'm going to focus this list just on the transactions for Cocos. And I can see here's my invoice, £305, where we've only received 300 So I'm going to ask Twinfield to match against the £305 invoice. And you'll notice in the footer of this section, there's a process difference of £5, which we'll need to deal with in the next step. So I'm going to click on the continue button to accept that assignment. And I've now got two sections over on the right hand side. The top section is the remainder. And Twinshield is asking me, what do you want to do with this remainder of the, the money that's, that's, that's for this bank line? The blue button has a number of different options. So I could say it's a supplier or a customer payment. I've got specifics for it. It could be a discount. So it could write it off as a discount or an actual write off in the system. But in my example here, I'm going to use general ledger. And this is going to be a bank charge. I click on continue to save the assignment. Now, when this transaction and the bank statement is posted, it will uh, post a £305 to the debtors. But then the opposite side of that, it will post £5 into the bank charges code. So I'm dealing with it all in one transaction. And down in the bottom right hand corner, I can now accept that allocation. That's left us with the one line on the bank statement, which is rent. That's the one we rejected earlier. And I could go back and code that up as, as required. Now, as we've been working through the scenarios up to now, I selected the one bank statement from the, uh, the bank statement screen. Just go back to cash and banks. From here, we went into the 1st of February and I'm focused on the lines for that bank statement. Now, one of the benefits of the new screens is that we can actually work with all unprocessed bank lines, not just on a day-by-day -day basis. You notice in the header, I've got an option to, that says show all bank lines. So by removing that filter, I'm now looking at any, any line that's not yet been posted. The beauty of this is that you can actually have any number of people working on the bank statement. So if you've got a split role uh, requirement where maybe one person deals with, with receipts, somebody else deals with payments, you could be both working on the data at the same time. Whereas with Classic, if somebody's in the daily bank statement, it locks it and you can only go, you can go into that once, once it's been finished with. Using the filters, we have options to filter by amount. So I could say, well, my role is to focus on, on payments. So I want to see any transaction that is in a range of minus 9999 to zero. And now I can just focus on the payments in that particular section. Just going to reset that back so we can see everything. So I've got an example down here of a creditor's payment run. £10,680. Now, uh, another way, another example would be that this is a manual payment run. Um, and we've just paid the suppliers through, through a faster payment batch through the online banking. We haven't used pay and collect within Twinfield. So now that that's cleared my bank account, I need to now post that onto the, onto the supplier's purchase ledger accounts. So if I click on the suppliers button, because it is a supplier payment, We've got the 10,000 to, to code up. So the first thing that I want to do is code this up to an invoice for British Telecom. So I can see here that I've got an invoice of £1,207. That's what we paid. So I select that one invoice and I click on continue. And similar to the example we saw before, I've got a remainder value at the top. So Twinfield saying, what do you want to do with this? So suppliers. And this time I'm going to uh, pay an invoice for enterprise and just repeat that process until we've got through all the suppliers that were in that batch so 
So I've now allocated against the invoices that I paid off. But within that batch, I also had payment on account to another supplier. And you can see here, I've got £1,157 left. So I'm going to go back into the suppliers. And this time, rather than looking at the open transactions, I'm going to twi switch the view of this search from invoices to suppliers. It's now showing me all the suppliers. I'm going to go to and select the invoice ballard. And now when I click on continue, you can see that that assignment is now made to that one supplier. So that will post it on account into that supplier for you to then later go back and uh, do some matching using the matching tools. Now, because this transaction is being split between different suppliers, I probably wouldn't want to make a rule around this because it would be different each time that particular scenario occurred. However, even though uh, it's not a requirement, system won't allow me to save a rule here because you'll notice that I can't accept this allocation, this assignment. The only option I have is to save it. Okay. Let me show you the impact of that. So if I close my view here, the line that I've just coded up, creditors payment, is still sat in the to assign bucket. OK, and the reason for that is Twinfield saying, well, actually, I can't move it into the, the two assigned bucket just yet because there's this amount here that whilst it's against a particular invoice, uh, not uh, sorry, a, a supplier, it's not actually against any invoices. So I'm deeming this not to be 100 percent complete yet. So that particular example of the transaction will always sit in the two assigned. Now, that's not a problem because you can still post the bank statement with those lines in the to assign. Just something to note that when you're looking at these screens, anything in to assign will either be anything that's still in suspense or anything that's not matched against a particular invoice in the system. Okay. The other example I have in here is uh, I've got a, a transaction for Howard Accountants. I don't know what to do with it. So first of all, you can imagine maybe it's a, a, a heavy day on the bank statement and I've got 20, 30, 40 lines that have come through. Um, so I can use the search to find Howard Accountants. If I now click on the line, that will open up the actual bank assignment details for me to tell Twinfield how it is uh, or how it should be coded, I should say. I'm looking at the transaction. I have no idea what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the to investigate button. And that's just then popped it into this section here for you to then come back and review at a later date. Not done anything with the coding. So if your bank, if you did post the bank statement, it would actually um, mark it and post it against the suspense account. So we've dealt with coding up the bank statement lines. Uh, we now need to post the bank statement. So I'm going to go back into cash and banks. And I'm going to go to the bank statements tile. Remember, I said this is a this is a replacement for the orange classic screen. So this is working very similar to the, to the way that screen works. Uh, I can see that this is the bank statement that I need to post. And I can either use the three dots over on the right hand side to click and select post statement. That's very similar to clicking the blue flag on the classic screen. Alternatively, I may have gone through and coded all the bank statement lines up and I'm happy that all these statements are ready to post. I can select them all or select them individually. And then by ticking the, the lines down in the bottom right hand corner, we have an option for post and that will post that batch for you. Okay. So hopefully that's given you a, a, an idea of um, some of the scenarios and how you can deal with those in, in the bank screens. They do look different to the classic screens, but once you start working with them, the methodology and the processes behind the scenes is still the same. Um, and once you get familiar with the terminology on the new screens, it does become easier to work with. One last area just to, to talk to you about is the allocation rules. If you've ever tried to look at the allocation rules and modify them within the classic screens, they're not the easiest of screens to work with. That's going to be completely redesigned. And you'll see here I've got a tile allocation rules. And from this screen, I can see instantly, has the rule that I've got in the system ever been used? If so, how many times has it been matched? And that gives me an indication that are my rules working? Do I need to adjust the criteria on them? Is there a redundant, a redundant rule in there 
that I can delete. Uh, I can search on here as well. So perhaps I was searching for John's payroll. So any rule in the system that's going to post a trans or code a transaction to the, the customer code of John's payroll um, will, will show up in the search. The nominal code, so anything that's a debtor's control, 1100. So it's searching on the match criteria and the destination columns. Much simpler to find your, your rules using this method. Once you've found a rule, then you can edit the rule and see the details. If I can just click on the icon here, that will expand the rule and tell me what, what the coding is. But if I click on the row, it will open the rule up for me and I can now start to adjust it. So perhaps uh, it shouldn't be uh, matching on the description with a partial match of rent. Perhaps there's an, uh, a code after that, maybe an account number. So maybe I want you to match on the word rent. And if I can spell, the screens don't help with, with your spelling, by the way. Um, so, and then I can put the, the, the value on the end. You can also change the coding down here. So another example, I have uh, two rules in here for John's payroll, both doing the same thing. So I actually only need one rule. So I can very quickly delete one rule just by ticking. And then down in the bottom right hand corner, click the delete button. And then the other rule that's in there, if I click on it to select it, actually going to the wrong customer. It shouldn't be John's payroll. It should be uh, my bookkeeping services. So as you can see, very quick and easy to actually change those rules around. You're probably also aware that when you create a bank rule, the bank rules are applied in the order of this list. Um, in the run order, you can see down we've got the, the numbers here. So if you've got a rule that you've created, which is never being applied and always being miscoded, check in the rule in the run order and you'll probably find that there is a rule further up that's taking precedence over, the, over your rule at the bottom. Now, it may be that you just need to adjust the criteria on that rule, or it could be that you, could, you need to change the order of this list. So perhaps this one here for uh, my payroll needs to be above uh, the uh, rule for rent. So I can just click on the three dots and I've got an option in this menu to change the, the order position. Either move straight to the top of the list, just move up and down by one, or move to a specific number as well. You can see now that John's payroll is now at the top. So that will help with managing the rules and getting them to be more efficient for you. Uh, this is one of the strong features of, of, of the banking module is the, uh, the learning and the rules, which will cut down on the amount of work that you have to do on a daily basis uh, over on the bank statements. So I hope that's given you uh, a feel for the new banking module, give you a, a few hints and tips for when you get the screens and you can start working with them. Back over to you, Phil. Perfect. Thanks, Colin. Uh, Colin, there are some questions um, that uh, we need to address. I'm conscious of time as well. So I'm going to go for the ones in the chat first. Um, what if we don't use Twinfield Sales Ledger? What would we see? Okay. I assume that's a question maybe coming from a customer who's using the integration with practice management. Um, you, would see, um, you wouldn't see the invoices within Twinfield. And uh, one of the features that's not yet available to us is the ability to save a rule if you don't match against an invoice. So you would still code up the receipt against a customer code, but you wouldn't be able to save the rule behind that. So for that scenario, you would still need to use the classic screen, unfortunately. Perfect. Can you split a payment between supplier and general ledger from yes. general? Yes, you can. Um, in fact, if I just go back into my uh, bank statement that we did and we look at the assigned, uh, that is uh, this particular um, example here. Uh, actually, it's not that one, sorry. It was the one for Corco's. So I um, posted the amount that I needed to to this customer. That left me a remainder value at the top which was this here, which I then posted to the general ledger bank charges. Uh, perfect. If no customer invoices are held within Twinfield, will all the customer receipts then sit in unassigned? 
Yes. Yes, they will. Okay. If you still have items uh, in to assign, does the transaction need to be made final or is it down to the individual settings? Uh, it is down to the individual settings and the scenario around how you're working with Twinfield. So when the bank statement is posted, the bank statement can be posted either provisionally or as final. Um, if you're using our integration with CCH Practice Management, you'll be aware that that bank statement has to be final before the cash uh, belonging to the practice management side will go across. Uh, so it all depends on the scenarios that you're working with. Okay. Do existing allocation rules work with a new bank statement process? They do, yes. So if you uh, once the once the module's there for you, if you click on the allocation rule, you'll see all your historic rules as well. Excellent. Can you work between the classic and the new modules on the same statement? Uh, oh, that is a really good question. Um, at the same time, I, I will need to test. Uh, but yes, you can uh, a, uh, work between them. If I go back into my bank statement screen here, you'll see that my bank statement for the first is here. And if I go into the bank statement lines, everything that I've done on the other screens is now here. I don't know whether the question was going as, as, as asking as far as this, but I will confirm whether you can actually process a bank statement if it's opening classic in and the new screens at the same time. I will check on that. Okay. We have Twinfield bolted to retail systems. What ramifications do you think this may have with the automatic transfer of invoices and payments? So I'm not 100% familiar with the integration from retail systems, but this isn't really affecting anything to do with the transactions that are ultimately being created in Twinfield. This is just a new set of screens sitting over the top of the bank statement data. So ultimately, it's still the same data that's being created in the customer's and supplier's accounts. Okay. And the final one in the chat, is there a box in which you can type a description as we can on the old system, e.g. if a payment is posted to wages, we need to enter the employee name? Uh, yes. Um, so on the allocation screen, let me quickly go into a bank statement. It doesn't matter which. So if I was to say this was a general ledger to wages, let's put it to gross wages um, and continue. I can now overtype this uh, description here. Uh, so this, this this is the description that comes through from the bank statement, but I can then overtype that uh, to be whatever I need it to be. Okay. So Colin, um, I'm going to just pass over to Mike in a second just for time, but there are some more questions in the chat. So could I ask that whilst I'm doing that, if you could just kind of jump into the chat and, and if there's any quick answers you can give and we'll pick any up at the end, if that's all right? Yeah, certainly. And I've got, there's also a couple in the Q&A as well that probably um, we'd be able to answer. So whilst we do, uh, whilst Colin's going to look at your questions, I'm going to run a quick second poll before Mike, Mike's session. And this is where we're really going to start to talk about a bit about the community and kind of other bits and pieces as well. So what we want to know is, are you currently registered as a member of the Walters Kluwer customer community? Yes. And I'm a member of the Twinfield Group. Yes, but I'm not in the Twinfield group. No, I'm not registered with the custard commu customer. Custard community? What's a custard community, Mike? I'll leave that one for you to answer. I'll leave that one for me. Uh, so look, um, we'll just give it a, a minute or so. Oh, in fact, uh, almost everyone has answered, which is good. We're getting there. So Mike, whilst everyone's doing that, I'm going to pass over to you to start talking through uh, the community. Yeah, as, uh, as the results come up, Phil, for, we are at 78%. So I'm just going to give it another second just to give a couple more, see if anyone else wants to add theirs in there. Yeah, just while the results are coming through, just just let us know when they're through, Phil. But the, the communities has been developed over the last sort of 12, 12 months or so, and it's a, it's a resource which I'm conscious isn't probably being used as much as it should. Um, this can be used for anything from a technical support point of view, um, if there's any product updates, we no longer communicate them via email. Everything is communicated through the communities. And it's just to give everyone a quick overview of actually what it is and, and how it can be utilized. Um, if anyone hasn't got access to the communities, um, my email address will be shared at the end. I can make sure you've got access. Um, and if you want a separate session just to run through a couple of things, we can do that as well. But just a quick example of how this can be used. Colin's just done a, a brilliant session on the new banking module. 
and on the home page for communities where we've got product information um, and I've got product help. This isn't just for Twinfield. Uh, I recognize quite a few customers on the call. So I know there's plenty that are using accounts production, uh, practice management, tax modules. So this can be utilized for the full portfolio of products that we have. But just concentrating on Twinfield, which is just down in the middle here. Um, if we concentrate on the banking module, we have eight articles here, which are all around how to use um, tips, workflows, bank lines, signing lines, all around the banking module within Twinfield. Um, and then this could be used to potentially save a call to technical support. I know a lot of people on the call have got relationships with myself and Colin and Karen, who's also on the professional services team. So it could eliminate an email or a call and just make your life a little bit easier. Um, you might even have a new starter who's coming into the business and this area will cover everything in reference to Twinfield from a transaction point of view, reporting, data entry, the fixed asset module, so this can be utilized in many different ways and, and probably save you a lot of time essentially contacting us direct. Um, the other area that I really want to contact on is the, well, uh, con uh, is the welcome pack for, for communities. So if I just go to uh, welcome to customer community here, these four sections that this link should really be anyone's favorite or, or added to anyone's favorite. So where we've got customer community login and registration, you've got logging in as an existing Walters Kluwer account user. If you're not an account user, how do you log in? How do I register? If you've got any external IT providers who want access to communities who might log support cases on your behalf. And more importantly, there's always going to be one main admin user for communities. So this is a help guide for all administrators. So how do you invite users across the wider business so they can essentially log support cases and join forums themselves? And um, if I just go back a step, the next one is, is finding answers on communities. So this should really be now anyone's first port of call for, for technical support. So we've in the communities, we have chatbot, you've got live chat, or alternatively, probably one of the most popular ways of, of using support now is raising the support case. Any cases that you raise through communities, you've got a record of them. If anything needs to be reopened at a later date, you can reopen a case. Um, and again, you just really get familiar with the process because this is where you're going to get your quickest answers and you're going to have a record of everything that's been communicated. Uh, the next thing just to highlight as well is the, is the forums area and the groups. Um, so you've got access to product specific groups within here. So if you're Twinfield users, accounts production users, make sure you're joining the relevant groups. And if there are any product updates or any releases that are going to be notified, again, they won't be notified via email. Everything will be notified via, via communities in them relevant groups. Um, so just make sure you join in the relevant ones for the products that you're using. And then more importantly as well, in the bottom right-hand corner from a self-study point of view, you've got our learning portal and all the courses that are available to you as a, as a, as a Walters Clue customer. So if anyone hasn't got access to this, please let me know. My details are going to be on the screen in a second. We can get you access and do a follow-up session just to go through sort of raising support cases and, and accessing a little bit more information great back to you Phil. um and i think look, this is the key one of the key points here is the community is um a really I, I think we saw some statistics internally about how quicker it is to get an answer to your query going via the community as it is to going via other routes. So it is definitely the preferred one. Colin, I think there's probably a few, while we've got a, another five minutes, um, I don't know how many of the questions you've, you've got around to answering directly, but there are a few more questions within there that we could probably go back um, and go through. So uh, one from Barbara, how long will both Classic and the new system banking run side by side? So I'm not aware of uh, any uh, dates of when the Classic module will be with, withdrawn but it certainly can't be done until we've got all the functionality in the new screens that we have existing in the in the classic screens okay perfect um if we have cth practice management can we not use the new bank process for customer receipts 
So uh, there is a limitation there in that you can't save a rule based on the receipt. So you could still use the new screens and co and code the receipt to the client code, but you can't save the rule. Um, you could still use the screens if you split the uh, the, the coding of the bank statement um, between um, sort of payments and receipts, for example, you could have somebody working in the new screens for the payments whilst somebody else is dealing with the receipts on the other side. So there is a limitation, unfortunately, at the moment. Okay. Uh, and obviously, these are, the, the new banking module is exactly that. It's new and we're expecting some of these limitations to be ironed out as we move forward. Uh, Angela, one for Mike. I'm not sure if we're registered for the customer community. How do I check? And one from Margaret as well. Same question. How do I check if we're registered for communities? Um, if you both email myself, um, which, Phil, if you uh, could share the, the last slide, my details, I will check with the relevant department who has got main access. Um, if it's someone who's already a main admin user within the business, um, I'll let you know how they can invite you to access as well. Perfect. Uh, we can do that. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Steph. A couple are from the Q&A. Can you use the matching screen to create rules for transaction booked into the general ledger, i.e. the bank interest example from earlier, or is it just for customer suppliers? Yes, yeah, so you can create a rule around transactions that involve GL transactions. Um, as with the classic screens, if you were to code to a GL code, the VAT, if you code anything to VAT at the bottom of the screen, that particular element of the transaction isn't saved within the rule, and that, that's the same as classic. However, you can define a default VAT rate against the nominal code that you're posting that particular transaction to. But certainly you can save rules around uh, the transactions for GL. Perfect. And what will happen with receipts where the invoices are not in Twinfield? I think we've been asked this one a couple of times. Yeah, so the invoice, if, if the invoice isn't in Twinfield, but the sales ledger is being maintained in Twinfield, um, then you would post the receipt to the customer code. But at that point, you wouldn't be able to create a rule based on that. So the next time that came through on the bank statement, it would still sit in suspense and you'd have to manually code it up. Okay. And I think this one might be along the same lines. Re, uh, final, we use practice management integration. If suspense currently we have to make final, will we have to do this with the new module? Uh, yes. Um, so... Um, a bank statement, when you go to post the bank statements, they are still posted in uh, all lines for one day. You can't post individual bank statement lines. So if there is anything left in suspense of those lines for that, that one day when you post it, they will get coded to suspense. And then you have to deal with that in, in whatever process you have for that. Okay. And I think this is the last one. And again, I apologize if I've missed any. Um, I, I, there's quite a lot of questions in the chat. So... Um, reusing the two modules so you could use the rules for suppliers where we don't have customer invoices. Uh, sorry, Phil, could you just repeat the question? Uh, this is from Kate. Reusing the two modules so you could use the rules for suppliers where we don't have customer invoices. Yes. Perfect. Good. Um, so, look, I think I've answered everything. I, there might be one or two that have, have, have snuck through. If there has... Can you please feel free to send uh, the question over to Mike and Mike will come back to you with an inquiry. So mike.hibbert at waterscluer.com for any further inquiries and Mike will kind of come back to you as well. If you haven't registered for the community, please do. It really is the most effective way to answer your queries. But as Mike said, more importantly, it is the only way we are communicating out now, upgrades, updates and, and, and bits and pieces like that. So, you know, anytime you can do that, that would be good. Mike, anything else you'd like to add around Twinfield or the communities? No, just again, it's, it's good to see a new update in Twinfield, especially around the banking side. I know a few customers have been asking for that recently. So, you know, Colin spending some time to go through, that's brilliant. And again, just highlighting what you've said, the customers is a really great resource that's been developed over the last 12 months. And, you know, it's one that we should be shouting about a bit more and, and getting as many people using it as possible because it's just going to make you that little bit more efficient um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, exactly. Um, absolutely. And Colin, how about you? Anything else you'd like to add before we head off? Uh, no, I don't think so. Hopefully I've given everybody a good taste for the, the screens and uh, 
yeah, and enjoy using them. <laughs> Excellent. And of course, if there are any more questions, um, if there are any questions that come up, the community is a great place to ask these as well. And if we can be of any more help, uh, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can reach out to Mike directly um, around Twinfield and any queries uh, or, or further support you may need um, in terms of kind of additional training or additional help. Uh, Mike would more than happy to pick them up with you. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to me as, as well. Uh, this recording will be made available afterwards. I just want to say thank you to uh, Mike for running us through communities. Thank you to Colin for uh, a great demo around the new bank screens uh, and, and everything else around there. And of course, thanks to Steph for running this in the background for us as always. Um, thanks for joining us and uh, have a great afternoon. And I hope for those of you that are snowed in, you don't get too snowed in or you finish early and go sledging. I think that's always the option, right? Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.